Terrorism Financing in Nigeria. A 2010 report reads thus, Nigeria has reported its seizure of a shipment of arms from Iran to the United Nations Security Council. The Nigerian authorities discovered the weapons, including rocket launchers and grenades, last month in container labeled as building materials. Now, further in that report, we see an Iranian representative of the company in Nigeria has suffered explanations and the misunderstanding has been cleared up. In September 2017, the Nigeria Customs Service has seized the container conveying 1,100 rifles at the Tinkan Island port. Question, so who imported them? Another 2019 report reads, the Nigerian Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, has seized a total of 11 containers of tramadol tablets at Apapa ports in Lagos, bringing to a total of 581 million tramadol tablets seized in two days. If one tablet costs one naira, then that is at least 581 million in value. Commendable seizure, one will say, but it appears it was only the seizure that made the headlines. So, who imported them? Several ghost worker schemes have been busted by the government at all levels. From the federal government with over 50,000, the report spoke about 27,000 in Bayelsa. Other states are not spared. Imo, Bauchi, Delta, Benue, Sokoto, Enugu, Oyo, Ekiti, and literally all the states. The discovery of ghost workers has been a continuous thing. However, a clerk in government cannot by himself or herself Push those names onto the payroll. So who are the big fishes behind the ghost workers phenomenon? And how many of them have we put behind the bars? They are unknown gunmen who live in dense forest, but come out at will to commit crimes and demand ransoms. Interestingly, every time that we need to discuss with them or pay kidnap ransom to them, we know who these unknown gunmen are and where to find them. In certain instances, there are even photo ops with government officials. Entire villages are burnt down, innocent people killed, and we don't get to know about the arrest, prosecution, and punishment of the perpetrators. Sometimes we even receive public commentaries that point towards the possibilities that some individuals and groups know who the perpetrators were, but nothing happens. Recently, the UAE was able to remind us that all those terrorism activities are financed. And if the news about superior firepower by terrorists are anything to be relied on, there is every possibility that terrorist financing gets more funding that we have been able to put on the table for the war. The UAE successfully investigated, arrested, prosecuted, and jailed six Nigerians for terrorism financing. The UAE's success may be part of what spurred the Nigerian authorities into action, culminating in the recent news that we have also been able to trace and investigate some Nigerians involved with terrorism financing. From the background I said above, in which we impounded weapons, but never got told who the importers were. We seized containers of dangerous drugs, but we don't know who imported them. We bust ghost workers, but we couldn't do anything about the beneficiaries of the ghost workers' camps. You can guess what my fears are about the investigated terrorism financiers. Will anything come out of it? My advocacy. At the heart of why we are where we are is our governance culture of impunity, in which crime against people are not punished because they are committed by members of the same social stratum, political convictions, ethnicity, or religion. If we truly want peace, we must banish impunity at all levels of leadership and hold people accountable for their actions. We can start with these terrorism financiers.